With no civilizations around for miles, the Burney Arms Railway Station is located in the heart of the Broads National Park and several miles from nearby Great Yarmouth and Reedham. When Thomas Trench Burney, sold the land to the railway company for Norfolk's first railway, this would become known as the Werry Lines. It went from Norwich to the East Coast, Thomas Burney stipulated that they provide a stopping place which also housed a post office, with only two trains a day it's no surprise that in 2020 the Burney Arms Railway Station was the least used station in the UK, with only a small handful of people stopping by. The Burney Arms Inn is located about three quarters of a mile from the station, and sits, in the shadow of one of Norfolk's tallest windmills the Burney Arms Mill. Sadly last orders were served and the pub closed in November 2015. Today it sits, alone, much of its interior has been ripped out and took to other venues. So what about the ghosts of the Burney Arms? Built in the later 18th century, by the Burney family of Morton Hall, Norfolk, this public house saw many landlords and families living throughout its history. Throughout the years, there have been reports of many hauntings both within and around the land that surrounds this pub. During the Burney Arms water frolic in 1829, an accident occurred where three customers from Borough Castle drowned whilst attempting to leave by boat. Their screams often heard on the misty waterways of the Broads. Just heard some movement out there. I don't know what it was. Hello? So I was just um, in the middle of doing lighting shoots upstairs, just doing some GVs. I don't hear any noises. Someone down there? Don't know. Don't know if the camera caught that, but
these strange noises could well be just rodents within the walls. As I went to pick stuff up from my car, I left the camera running upstairs in the living room area. What are these strange noises that were picked up? I'm not a big fan of orbs, but this particular one is interesting the way it flickers and at the same time footsteps are heard. It seems to point quiet to be honest. It's quite modernized. I keep hearing these glasses or something moving. I don't know why. Let's go over here. So this area in here is well it's a bit outstanding now. It's part of the old Burnley Arms. But as you walk through here, this would have been Almost like a conservatory added on over the years. I mean, it's something in the last 50 years or something. Uh, it's an old kiln. There's the pottery on. Don't know why that's here. the light off the camera it's a bit heavy to do both so in here would be the main bar and down here the footrest many years of people's feet it's not live is it no. I know I've got a couple of lights on but there isn't actually much in the way of uh, lights or power in this place. Very low power to be honest.
So I'll go through here. This would have been the original main entrance to the Burnie Arms. Yeah, so they would have come through the doors and gone through this way. And this is the other side. So just through there is the bar. But what they've done is they've sealed this off because eventually this area will be reopened to the public for the toilets through there. And um, that's why they've had to seal this off for health and safety. So this will look really clean once it's done. A few years ago, there was a fire in this area. That's why if you look at the ceiling, it's all black tarred. And I guess they'll seal where that door can be locked. And then this will probably be closed off as well. It's all to do with the bistro. The bar bistro, that's next door now. Is that now? That's not a gas lamp, is it? No, it's electric. Strange. Yeah. There's still a lot of the old clocks here. Hey, one leg on the floor. That's funny. Let's try the old kitchen. When I originally came here for um, a prelim preliminary, I'll say the word, of the place, I had to cycle here, a bit of a nightmare. Um, there was a smell, as I was being shown around, the smell of perfume. And turns out rosemary, or rose water, I believe it is, is a common thing smelt here. So that's out uh, in the main bar now. Maybe it's the lights. Maybe they don't like the lights. Let's just turn the torch off. How have I lost? Seven minutes left. <laughs> Maybe jump at it. <laughs> Jeez. That's um, these tanks that they have. Nothing power at all. <laughs> Loud. Well, nothing on the initial walk around. Um, but the night is young, as they say. And I'm gonna swap this battery over because I seem to suddenly have five minutes left. And then let's crack on. Constantine Rudave was a Latvian writer and also a parapsychologist. He studied many aspects of the paranormal, but one particular thing was he invented a device called the Rudave diode. It is believed he was able to talk to the dead and receive communication just using diodes rather than microphones. This device does have some skeptical sides, but also some interesting results, as was published in Breakthrough, a vinyl that was released in the 70s, and it's believed that they communicated with Winston Churchill. Demand to 
Okay, so what I'm holding here is a ruled away device. It was developed by a scientist back in the 40s or 50s, I believe it was. And the only microphone is there. And when I want to speak, I press that button and uh, it will activate that microphone so I can hear on the recording. When that's not happening, it doesn't use any microphones for recording to a dictaphone. It uses these little antennas, as you can see, and diodes. So there's no microphone used in the actual recording for EVP. Um, there's been a lot of things going on back in the 50s and 60s with this device. Um, you can look into it a bit more. I can leave a link below. But it's definitely something I think that's worth more investigating now with the more modern technology. Um, because when this device first came out by the scientists um, who created it, it would have been a massive box uh, with diodes in. So now obviously technology's gone really small. But yeah, so let's see what happens. Right, so you can see that's picking up my voice on that one. And this one doesn't pick it up, even though what you're hearing here is actually from these antennas here. And then the microphone, if I press that in, you watch, it'll feed back, but... Hello, hello. There we go. So we'll sync this all up in post, so you guys can hear what's going on. Is there anybody here with me right now? My name's Jamie. I mean no harm or disrespect, but is there any ghosts or spirits of this Bernie Arms pub here with me right now? Okay, so the Hewitt family were here up until around 1910 when the pub lost its license. So Henry, was you responsible for the pub when it's lost its license? Can you tell me why it lost its license? Okay, so the Hewitt family were here up until around 1910 when the pub lost its license. So Henry, was you responsible for the pub when it's lost its license? Henry, was you responsible for the pub when it's lost its license? What about Knights? Charles Knights? Charles, are you with us? Any of the Knights family, please come forward and talk. Another Charles Carver. Gentlemen, please feel free to talk to me. One gentleman to another. I may look strange to you in my different type of outfits. It's what you may have worn back in the day. Are you around the corner there? Is that you, Charles? Is there a Charles Schofield here? Charles? No? Hey, it seems awfully quiet. Is that something around the corner then? But <clears throat> did anyone here pass away in the Bernie Arms water frolic? Did you lose your life?
that you, you do that again. If you uh, are one of the people that sadly lost their lives, just do that sound again. I highly recommend using headphones and really focusing in on the sound to hear those syllables that are detected. Right, I'm in the tent. I mean, I could have just put something on the floor, I suppose, but <clears throat> being in the tent, I've kept it closed all night to stop dust and that getting in. I've got this gauze on here as well, so that'll keep any bugs out. Um, it's now, it's actually now the witching hour. So, I'm gonna stay awake for a little while and then get a couple hours sleep and I've left things running downstairs. Let's see, just see what happens. It might have been a quiet night, but I'll tell you one thing I've been having is batteries. This camera particularly is now on its third battery. Now, these batteries can last oh, a long time, but I don't know, it seems to be, seems to be um, really uh, counting down. <laughs> Maybe they're trying their best, you know, and using the batteries to to communicate, but who knows? It's been an interesting night, so let's see what happens Why I have a little sleep. As I went to sleep, the camera did pick up something strange. This haunting whistle did wake me up. It was almost like someone searching for someone. What's up everyone? Thanks for watching this episode of Paranormal Torch. I hope you enjoyed it here at the Burnie Arms in Norfolk. It was interesting because a lot of the action that was happening, if it was spiritual, was coming from when I was doing the GVs. And then at like 11.30 at night, it was like chucking out time and everything disappeared. But in the meantime, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe, like the actual video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. That's a lot of videos. Take care.